So if you guys have been following along, you know we've been doing a ton of suspension work lately on Project EG in preparation for these new coilovers coming. Today we're going to mix it up a little bit and we're going to look inside the engine bay. Obviously the car is still on jack stands, I haven't really driven it yet, but I've been turning it on every weekend and you know, just letting it run. And the one thing that I have noticed is that there is some oil leaks going on. So this morning I actually went down to Honda and picked up some new gaskets, uh, just various ones over the engine, not all of them, uh, because I have replaced some of them, but uh, we'll go ahead and take a look here and I'm going to show you what's going on with this oil. There's really two main points of concern for me. One being right up here, you see that is some fresh oil that's built up right there. And I don't know if you can tell through the camera, but it just is kind of glistening all right here. You know, like it's got a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the distributor O-ring. And while I was there, I went ahead and uh, got some VTEC gaskets. So we'll go ahead and check that out. And yeah, you guys see this, this is a connection that just kept getting more and more brittle and breaking every time I would even get near this area. So I need to go ahead and fix this guy. I'm gonna use my old wiring harness that I have down in there and we're gonna go ahead and change that out. But then also down under the block here on the crank pulley side, you'll see right up in here, you see that little drip of oil that's sitting there? I think this gasket uh, this Felpro gasket, you know, from Advanced, it's not great, and it's not on there great. So my plan is to go ahead and change that out with an OEM part. So here are the gaskets that I got. All these came from Honda. Uh, this right here is the oil pan gasket. Now this one is for the D16Y8, and this really threw me through a loop because obviously it looks very different than the one I was used to on the D16Z6 over there. You know, that one's flat. So I need to go ahead and take this oil pan off and see, does it accept this gasket? Or is this old gasket on here just not on there well enough? So I'm not sure if I got the wrong part here or not. And when I say, you know, did I get the wrong part or not, apparently there was two versions of the D16Y8. One of them, uh, which came in the EX, which was the two-door coupe, uh, has this type of gasket where it's like, you know, real thin like that. It's not the flat one that goes all around with the holes in it, you know, the screws go through. Uh, and then there's the other one, which is apparently from an LX, which is the flat gasket. You know, I do know that this D16Y8 did come out of a two-door coupe, but I'm pretty sure they only made the EX in a two-door coupe, not an LX. Uh, but so anyway, I'm gonna take that oil pan down again and just go ahead and see, uh, because you know, we put that thing together so fast, man, when we were trying to get this in. And you know, we did this whole swap in a matter of hours that day with the four of us dudes. But so here are some of the other gaskets. This is an OEM valve cover gasket, which I won't be doing today because I do have plans for that valve cover. Uh, so we'll go ahead and mess with that at a different date. Uh, but then I also got the VTEC screens here. The uh, three little compartment screen for the VTEC solenoid. This is the top of the VTEC. And I think this is another portion of uh, the cap on the VTEC. And then uh, this is the distributor O-ring, and I actually went and got a front main seal as well uh, for the uh, crank pulley side. We'll see if I get to that today or not. So I get it, you guys. Why not just go ahead and do all this when the engine was out of the car? I get it, okay? It all happened fast that day. Hey, this is where we're at. Uh, so we did the rear main seal, uh, you know, before we connected up the trans and the motor. So that's good to go. It's really just these other ones that are really pretty simple to get to. And this is kind of my engine stand here at the minute, you know. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get to the VTEC solenoid first. Uh, but uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and drain the oil now. With that draining, we're gonna go ahead and come up here to the VTEC solenoid, and we're gonna go ahead and take off these three 10 millimeter bolts here, and then we can pull this whole piece away from the head. And then of course we have to undo our clips. So the pressure switch here, and then this top portion here, this little clip 
that's going to the top. We'll undo those and take the whole thing off. So we got the VTEC solenoid off of the head there and got it on the workbench. And this is what I've got. The screen that's on there, it's got some stuff in it, you know, it looks like it can be changed. I think we looked at it that day and it was like, Meh, you know, it'll be okay just to get it running today. So, you know, I'm definitely gonna go ahead and change it out. And so here are the uh, part numbers. These are from Honda. If you go ahead and need those, just screen capture that. This is the VTEC screen, which goes right here. And then this portion here goes up in here. So we're gonna go ahead and take this screen out and there are three uh, more 10 millimeters. We'll go ahead and take off and pop this guy off the top. All right, so we got the solenoid here in the gasket. I'm just kind of using this little pick tool right here and just go ahead and lightly work your way in there. Get it on under there and just kind of Pop it on out. Now these top three are 10 millimeters as well. They're on there pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the old impact gun here. our VTEC solenoid all separated. So this is the top little hat part here. See where the gasket goes in there. And this is the old gasket there. And it doesn't look bad, you know, but hey, I'm gonna go ahead and replace them because I am here doing it. <laughs> and so then here we have the new gaskets. Go ahead and take those out in a sec. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy off. And there we are. We got the new screen here and the old screen. And this is the new gasket, old gasket. So yeah, it will be a difference in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, you know clean this up just a little bit with paper towel and just kind of get that grime off. Same thing with in there, up there. And then let's take a look on the back of the head here. I think that part looks pretty good, but go ahead and clean it up. All right, and the top part is cleaned up decently. So is the other part of the surface here. I'm just gonna take this new gasket, a little bit of fresh oil that I have on my finger here, and then just gonna get this thing going and then just pop it on into place here. And this one just kind of presses down in there lightly, like you don't have to force it or nothing like that. Just fits right on in. And then with that top part on, we can go ahead and connect it back up. This little portion right here, this little thumb, kind of presses down on this, on the VTEC solenoid. You see the piece kind of moving there. And so we just connect those two back up. And we'll go ahead and bolt everything down. And then we take our little 10 millimeters and go ahead and just feed them into place by hand. Just kind of lightly put them into place. And then we'll use the wrench to put the rest down. And then for this new gasket with the screen here, same thing, I'm just putting a little bit of oil right around it. And we'll go ahead and just pop it on in place and just kind of press it on in place. And then with the new gaskets in place and everything, we can go ahead and put this back on the car. And once we line this guy up, just use our 10 millimeter bolts, to put it back on in place. And just go ahead and connect up the top part again and the VTEC solenoid. And the VTEC pressure switch.
Okay, so really easy, right? I mean, and that's a common place for leaks to happen on these Y8s from what I hear anyway. So super simple to change out those two gaskets, pop the thing back on, connect it back up. So what we're gonna look at next is the distributor. We're gonna take that off and change out the O-ring. <laughs> look at this thing, man, it's so ridiculous. So that connection is obviously already undone. I'm gonna be messing with that after all this. But so you see here, we got the three bolts uh, for the distributor holding the housing to the head. There's one kind of hidden down in there. So what you can do, you know, if you haven't touched that or taken that thing off, what I understand is, you know, go ahead and mark the position by like taking a Sharpie and just drawing right around where your position was. That way, when you know, when you put this thing back on, it's going in the same spot. Uh, so these, I believe, are 12 millimeter, and we'll go ahead and take this distributor off. Distributor off, super easy. Just these three 12 millimeters. This one I actually got out of the junkyard. That's why you see the BUP on it. You know, they label it so that you can't just return it and get some money back. But so here's the old O-ring. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but you know, it's probably been on there for a while. Like I said, it came out of the junkyard and I did not replace it before. Again, I just wanted to get this thing running, you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that with the new one here that I got from Honda. And it's a simple matter of just popping that old one off, lube this one up, put it back on, and yeah, looks pretty grody down in there. But you know, I'll go ahead and clean all that up while this is off. Now listen, I know most of you guys know how to do this, okay? But there are people who watch who don't know, and that's totally cool, man. I'm in that same spot too, where I'm learning as I go. So don't feel bad if you're one of those guys. But the distributor can only go on one way. These two little uh, splines right here, they can only fit onto the camshaft one way. And you see how they're kind of situated in there. It's like going like this right now. So obviously it needs to go the same way. Now, if you're like trying to force this thing on, like maybe you'll get it, but it's not supposed to go that way. Like it'll be 180 degrees out and the car won't start or it'll have a real hard time starting. It needs to go in nice and easy, okay? And make sure everything is nice and flush against the head. And then go ahead and use the 12s to put it back down. Now I know you guys, this is like super easy work, whatever, you know, but hey, this is kind of nice. Like I like doing just little jobs like this too. You know, I've been busting my butt, man, doing all this suspension stuff over the past couple of weeks and this is a nice light job. And in case any of you guys were wondering who didn't know, this is a D16Y8, everything is OBD1. So this is a D15B7 distributor and it's a P28 that is stock ECU inside of the car. And then this wiring harness is actually from a 95 DX. We took it off there because it's got the four wire O2 running in there. This car is originally a CX, so it only had the one wire O2. All right, so with those little jobs out of the way and the oil now officially drained, I am gonna go ahead and work on the oil pan gasket. Uh, oil's all drained, and again, I'm doing this because I feel like the gasket's not on there great just to begin with. You see right here, I feel like it's over tightened. It's kind of seeping out over the edges here. And you know, with this gasket maker, I don't know if we did it in enough time. Like I feel like it dries really, really quick. And I'm not sure that we put this all back together quick enough. And you know, again, it was just kind of bolted on there super fast. So especially over here, I know you need to be very generous with the gasket maker. And that's right where I was leaking right there. So let's go ahead and pull this guy off. It's just a bunch of 10 millimeters, um, nuts and screws. But first, we actually need to go ahead and remove the exhaust manifold. It's just these three bolts right here. And then I'm gonna try to just drop it down and support it just enough so that I can 
pull the oil pan down without having to remove this portion of the exhaust. So these are the bolts we're working with here and they are 14 millimeter, which I got loaded up on the gun. So I could only get the gun on the front one. Bummer. Deep socket 14. So I've got the oil pan under here and I'm thinking I'm gonna try to just lean that down onto it. Exhaust isn't really hooked up that great anyway, you guys. So I'm not getting too crazy about it. That's something I'm gonna worry about once, you know, everything's running right. And then that guy just kinda drops on down. Actually, it's just wiggling right there. So the exhaust is actually just being supported by those two hangers right down there. It's hanging here just fine. And yeah, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and just drop this oil pan. That'll be plenty of room to get this thing down. Again, these are just 10 millimeter nuts and bolts going all the way around and we'll drop it on down. I got the oil pan off. It's very easy, you know, it's just a bunch of those 10 millimeters uh, nuts and bolts there. And that's what we're looking like under there. But so this is kind of a bummer for me. Uh, this gasket you'll see here is definitely for a D16Y8 off of the EX. And you'll notice how it is very different from the gasket that we had on there. That's because this is all flat all along here, which I'm assuming is off of an LX. Um, I believe it is for the D16Y8, like I'm sure a Y7 is the same, but this pan did come with the motor, you know, I don't know, I'm assuming it's a D16Y8, but it is that flat style gasket. You know, see we had that on there, but again, I don't know that we did it quite right that first time. So yeah, I'm probably going to have to go and exchange this at Honda and go get the one for this. And I'm back. Now that's more like it. This is the guy. The uh, Honda parts guy said likely these people changed out this pan because all the black pans are the steel pans and that's gonna come with this gasket here that likely was off an LX with the D16Y8. So anyway, obviously you see this is the right gasket matching up that guy. Nice and flat surface with that. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Obviously I'm changing out this gasket because I don't want the oil pan to leak anymore. I want all my oil to stay in there, especially when I'm on track and everything's sloshing side to side. So when working with the Honda Bond, you kind of got to work quick. And this is what it says in the manual. You know, you want to put some of this Honda Bond on the corners, like here, and then down in this little swoop here. And the same thing on this side in these corners, and then down in this swoop here. My plan is to go ahead and do that on this pan. Then I'm gonna take the gasket and put it down on there. Then I'm gonna take the whole thing and lift it up and put it on back up top. All right, so quickly, this is what I have. I just went ahead and put it on, smeared it with my finger on the corners, and then right in the uh, groove there, I'm gonna take the gasket, put it on. All right, so this gasket maker definitely does work quick, man. I put it on those edges as you saw, laid the gasket down, and I just firmly pressed it into place all along. Obviously, I haven't put any up on here yet. I may put some, uh, but mostly it says, you know, in the corners. It even says that in the manual. But so that thing is making a very good seal. Just press it down and then kind of wipe up the excess going around. And so actually what I just went ahead and did was put some in this grooves in between these parts here. So it's firm down all the way now. And so we'll take some more and go ahead and put our dabs up on here. And then I'll smooth that over. Pretty easy. 
Uh, I just went ahead and put it up on in there and quickly grabbed these little uh, nuts here and threaded those on uh, all the way around the pan. I still have the bolts over here, so we've got to put those in, but this just kind of gets it up there and steady, and really you just put them hand tight. Now this was maybe the biggest thing that I have read and that even the Honda parts guy told me is do not over tighten this. Now even in the manual, it's like eight or 10 foot pound. Like it is so light. That is almost hand tight, like just more than hand tight. So really, you know, there's so many bolts and nuts going along this thing that it's holding it up there very nice but we want to go ahead and still do our star kind of pattern. Show you that here in a sec. Um, but essentially just don't over tighten the thing. And I think that's definitely what I did last time. And also in the manual, it says that you can take a little bit of Honda Bond and put it over these holes where the uh, bolt is gonna go, just for that added security of that, because you know the parts there with the nut on it, those are already threaded through but that is essentially a hole, so the gasket needs to really be working there over time. So we'll just go ahead and put a little bit of Honda Bond and then put them bolts in. All right, so all the nuts and bolts are in. Now, excuse my crude drawing here, but this is our oil pan, believe it or not. <laughs> this is if you're looking at it from down below. So you're on the ground looking up at the thing. The drain plug is in the back, and you know, the front of the car is this way. Concerning with just the nuts that are on the oil pan, we're gonna start in the dead center with one, tighten that down a little bit, two, three, four, five, six. These obviously being the edges. So it's only eight foot pound, and it says that in the manual. So that's literally like hand tight, but go ahead and use your torque wrench if you want, you know? So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll take care of the ones in the middle in a star pattern. All right, so I got everything bolted up in there. It's essentially hand tight. It is deceiving because you want to really crank down on the thing, but you don't have to. All the bolts and nuts are tightened up at essentially eight foot, eight foot pound. You know, it's almost hand tight. And I can already tell this is better because the gasket is not sticking out anywhere along any part of the oil pan. So next I'm gonna go ahead and bolt back up the exhaust and yeah, I am still using the same gasket here. That's just what it is, man. Maybe I'll change it out for a new one one day once I know I'm gonna stop messing with this. All right, so everything's tightened back up. Now, you know, this is kind of a weird job. Like, it, it's steps, okay? Don't just go in and tighten one bolt or nut down in the oil pan all the way and then do the others. Like, you wanna do that kind of star pattern I showed you, but then do it three times, you know, two or three times. Just keep going around and just check them, make sure they're good. Look at the gasket going around. Make sure it's not kind of bellowing out over the edges of the oil pan. That's how mine looked before and it was just a leaky mess. I'm really hoping that this is gonna solve it. So make sure everything is tightened up. Of course, your oil drain pan, uh, the plug as well and then uh, we'll go ahead and add some oil. So in the beginning of the video, you guys saw that I had some other oil gaskets. Uh, I am not gonna be addressing those in this video, uh, like the valve cover, for example. You know, I wanna go ahead and paint that up, make it real cool. Uh, hopefully doing that next weekend. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but then like you saw, I had the front main seal as well. I am not going to be doing that this time. I'm gonna fill this thing back up with oil, uh, take care of that little connection there, and I'm gonna start it up, get up to operating temperature. Obviously, it's not gonna go anywhere, it's on jack stands right now, but I just wanna you know, then shut it off and make sure that nothing is leaking. Um, I want to rule out, you know, was it the oil pan gasket? Um, I really have my strong suspicions about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and rule that out, leaving those other gaskets off for right now. Um, again, warming it up, all that stuff. And then if it's still leaking, then I can take care of the front main seal, you know, depending on where it is, of course. If it's still dripping from that area, that would be my next guess. Then, of course, it could be the oil pump gasket. I really hope it's not that. Uh, I don't want to get that hard into it. But, you know, we can do it if we have to. Uh, so I'm going to fill this thing with, up with oil, take care of that connection. And, uh, yeah, I'll give you an update uh, the next time that I see it. So thank you all so much for watching.